Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session, we're going to teach you how to use output parameters and return values in Microsoft SQL Server. What we'll cover in this session is a couple of techniques for returning values from stored procedures. We're going to start with a quick recap of input parameters and then move on and show you how to define output parameters. We'll show you how you can get the result of an output parameter in a calling procedure and then finally, we'll show you how you can use return values in stored procedures as a simple alternative to output parameters. So let's get started. Before we start talking about output parameters, I just wanted to give you a quick reminder of how input parameters and basic stored procedures work. So what we've done here is created a basic procedure which accepts a single parameter called at year, and the data type of that is an integer. The value that's passed in is used in the WHERE clause of a simple SELECT statement, so we're going to return a list of all of the films made in a particular year. We've already created this procedure, so just to show you how you would then execute it, in a separate script, we'll exec or execute SP films in year, and we've named the at year parameter and passed in the value 2000. When I execute this script, I'll see a list of all of the films made in the year that I've requested. What I'd like to do next is give my procedure the ability to pass information back out when it's executed. So here I'm passing information in via a parameter. I'm going to create two new parameters which will pass information back out to the calling procedure. For this example, we're going to pass out a comma-separated list of the film names and also a count of the number of films in that list. To add these parameters to the stored procedure, we need to head back to the script which we used to create it in the first place, and modify the create keyword to the alter keyword instead, and then I simply need to add a couple of extra parameters to the parameters list. So I usually do this on a separate line with a comma at the start of each line. I'm going to have a new parameter called at film list, and the data type of this will be varchar max. If I could spell varchar, that would help, excuse me. There we go. I'm also going to add another parameter called at film count, and the data type of this one is going to be int again. Now at this point, these parameters are both input parameters. To switch them into being output parameters is remarkably straightforward. You simply add the word output to the end of the definition of the parameter. So there we go, we've created two new output parameters. Once I've defined my output parameters, the next thing I need to do is tell them what values they will return to the calling procedure. I'm going to show you that first with the film count parameter because it's slightly easier to deal with than the film list. All my film count will do is return the number of records affected by this select statement. And I can do that very, very simply using the global variable at at row count. So to do this, I need to set at film count so it's a lot like using variables, you set the value of the output parameter, you set it to be equal to the value you're interested in, and in this case it's the result of a global variable called at at row count. Setting the value of the film list output parameter is a little bit more complicated, so I first of all need to build the list within the select statement. So in order to make this work, I'm going to declare a variable in my store procedure, in which I'll store the list of films, and then transfer that value into the output parameter at the end of the procedure. So I'm going to declare at films, I can't think of a more sensible name than that, and the data type will be varchar max again, and then I can set the initial value of this parameter, sorry, this variable, to be equal to an empty string. If I don't initialize my variable, it retains a value of null to begin with, and that's going to affect what I'm going to try to do here in the SELECT statement. What I'm going to do is build my list by saying SELECT at films equal to at films plus the film name plus a comma and a space as a literal string. So what this will do is build a, a comma-separated list of each film name that is selected based on this WHERE clause. All I need to do now is transfer the result of this variable into my output parameter. 
And I'll do this at the end of the procedure. After I've stored the row count, I can say set at film list equal to at films. And there we go. We have two symbol output parameters, and each of their values have now been set. Now that I've created all of the output parameters that I want, I can show you how to retrieve those in a calling procedure. Before I do that, I'll need to quickly execute this script, however, to update my current store procedure. I need to alter it. So in order to do that, I click Execute and make sure that at the bottom of the screen it says Commands Completed Successfully. I can then return to um, a script that I created earlier on, which will execute this store procedure. Uh, and this was with the original input parameter. Now that I've added two further parameters to it, if I try to execute it again, it's not going to work. Um, my output parameters are both compulsory because I haven't made them optional. So in order to use my output parameters, I need a couple of um, variables into which the outputs will go. So I'm going to declare a variable called at names, and that'll be varchar max, and that's going to hold the comma separated list of film names. I'm also going to declare the, uh, a variable called at count, and that's going to be an int, and that's going to hold the count of the films returned. What I need to do then is head back to my execute statement, or my exec statement, and add in a way to retrieve values from each of my output parameters. So I have an output parameter called at film list. So remember, in my store procedure, the film list is the one that retrieves the list of film names. And I'm going to set the result of that parameter to be equal to the name of the variable into which I wish to pass the result. And I also need to specify that that's done as an output. The same approach for my, um, my count, my film count. If I say at film count, which is again the name of the output parameter. And I want to make that equal to the name of the variable that I'm using in this procedure. And that's going to be declared as output as well. At this point, I should be able to execute this script. And I'll see rather than an error message, commands completed successfully. So I know now that I'm successfully retrieving values from these two output parameters. All I need to do now is create some way to display them. So let's do that with a simple select statement. Let's say select at count. And I'm going to give that an alias as well. That's going to be as a uh, number of films. And then a comma. And I can also say at names. And I'll give that an alias, list of films. So when I finally execute the procedure one more time, I should see not only the fact that my procedure works, but also values output to these two variables. So far in this video, we've seen how to use output parameters to return values from store procedures. A couple of features that I haven't explicitly mentioned but are worthwhile noting about output parameters. First of all, you can have as many output parameters as you like in your store procedure. Your procedure can return as many values as you want. The second feature is that you can also use any data type for an output parameter. So you can use text, numbers, dates, etc. Now there is one further way that you can return a value from a store procedure. It's using a feature called a return value. The, they are slightly more simple to use than output parameters, but they have two disadvantages. First of all, you can only have one return value in a single store procedure. And second of all, the data type of that return value must be a number. But with those restrictions in mind, I'd like to quickly show you how you can use a return value to get an output from a store procedure. To show you how return values work, I've gone back to a previous version of my films in year procedure. So I've taken away the output parameters and I've restored the select statement to simply selecting a list of films made in the year 
that we'll provide in our calling procedure. What I'd also like my procedure to do is return the count of the films that are affected by this select statement. So to do that, I'm going to add a return statement after the select statement. I'm going to return at at row count. You can use the return statement to return any number that you like. It could be an explicit value, it could be the result of another expression. As long as it's a number, your store procedure can return it. So all I need to do now is execute this procedure to alter and update my changes. Commands completed successfully. And then I can think of a way to execute it to retrieve the value that it's going to pass out. So to get the result or the return value of a store procedure, I need to execute it in a calling procedure. So here we go, I'm executing films in year passing in the value 2000 to the year parameter. Now in a similar way to using output parameters when you want to get the return value of a store procedure you need to declare a variable usually to hold the result. So I'm going to declare add count which will be an integer. Now the next bit of syntax is slightly odd. In the execute statement we're going to exec the name of the, um, the variable that I've just created and make that equal to the result of this store procedure. All I need to do now is display that information somewhere and I can do that with maybe a simple select statement. So I'm going to say select at count and I'm going to give that an alias as a number of films, let's say. And there we go. So if I execute this calling procedure I should see two sets of results this time, not just the list of film names, but also the result of my return statement as well. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.